All right, testing, testing. Let's see uh, if the equipment's working fine today. So if any, anybody can hear me, uh, if you could just type in yes underneath the question box. I believe I'm live, but I'm not getting any feedback yet, so uh, just let me know if anyone can hear. Excellent. All right. Excellent, I appreciate that. Okay, excellent. Good, good, good. Okay, well, we got about uh, two or three minutes before we officially begin. I don't want to start too early because uh, it kind of uh, people get upset and they feel like they missed out on something. So it is about uh, two, two and a half minutes to go. So if you would, just get settled in, maybe grab a notepad and a pen, maybe something to drink, and uh, we're going to start here shortly. So appreciate everybody being on time, and I'll get with you real quick. Thanks. Looks like we're going to have a uh, pretty full crew today. Had a lot more sign up than I thought we would. Begin the uh, week after a big, uh, a big holiday weekend in the states. I didn't realize we'd get this many people showing up on a Tuesday, but it looks like the time was good for everyone. So, congratulations for those that can make it. If you wanted to uh, also send this information to uh, those who uh, were not able to attend live today, I am recording it. I say that to myself just to remember, uh, remind myself to hit the record button. So uh, I did that. So it is recording as we speak. And I will be able to uh, upload this to my YouTube channel and uh, send it to you, friends, family members, whoever else uh, is interested in Belize as well. So like I said, just wait another couple of minutes here. About a minute, minute and a half to go. Where's everybody from? I, uh, I, I know uh, I recognize some names. I see we have some people from Edmonton, Canada, and from uh, Dallas, uh, Fort Worth area in Texas. Anybody else care to uh, say where they're logging in from today? Ottawa, Canada. Okay, good deal. All right. You know, I love Canadians. They uh, they saved us during the 2008-2009 recession. We, uh, you know, the exchange rate was really good, and the oil money up in the uh, oil sands area of Alberta. Um, and a lot of buyers in the area, as well as Toronto. I'm originally from Michigan, born and raised in Michigan, and uh, lived there till uh, until I moved to Belize, and uh, have a lot of good clients in Toronto as well. Must be those cold, cold Canadian winters that drives everybody to come down. Colorado, excellent. I was just in Colorado two weeks ago, uh, Denver area. We were there presenting a uh, syndication real estate syndication program for Belize in Denver had uh, two evenings of presentations to accredited investors went really really well and uh, Vancouver Island all right as an good good got some clients from Vancouver Island they actually bought a condo where I lived in uh, Royal Palm Villas very nice couple never did make it there yet I heard it's beautiful all right all right, 7 o'clock, so let's get this show on the road. First of all, thank you everyone for attending and for those who might be showing up in a few minutes. We uh, we know your time is valuable, and I just want to uh, tell you that I'm going to make this as interesting and as educational as possible. I see that many of you who have registered to attend today's live event have already purchased property in Belize, and you're probably looking for updates and different things that are going on. I'm going to be able to give you some of those. Some of you have not invested yet, and for, for some of you, this is just a an information gathering webinar, and I just want to tell you right up front that I am not going to be selling anything at all in this webinar. There's no uh, wait to the end, and then I'm going to pitch a, a bunch of properties that I'm going to make a boatload of money off you on. There is no uh, offerings on this webinar at all, and that's done on purpose. I prefer to use these webinars as means to educate my clients, to bring them up to speed on what's going on in Belize, and then if they want to talk about more specific things uh, later in a personal one-on-one -on -one or even over email, then we can set that up. So uh, again, I am Dennis Kay, born and raised in Michigan, and uh, loved it there. It's a beautiful state, but ended up moving to Belize over 13 years ago, and I lived on the mainland and also on the island. So if you have any questions regarding the differences between the two, which one's better for lifestyle, investment, depending on your personality, we can discuss that. And also, if you're looking to retire to Belize, I'm not going to get into anything about retirement in today's webinar, but I have written and published a Belize Relocation and Investment Guide uh, that you can pick up. So talk to me more about that later. And I do specialize 
in investment properties and helping my clients to invest in Belize for the return on investment. Now, it might be that you're looking at these, this information as a means to uh, invest in a lifestyle opportunity. In other words, you're looking to own a vacation home or um, you know retire to Belize or something like that. That's fine, but what I fee feel is a, is a key driver in any market is those things that are are driving the market up in value to make it a good investment. So just as an example, some of you who are looking for a vacation home or retirement home might also be looking for a way to rent that out so you can make money when you're not there and so forth. So you need to understand some of the uh, things that are going on uh, to drive rental income, to drive occupancy rates, and to drive the market up. So I'm going to cover a few of those things in my webinar today. Let's get the slides advancing here. I got to spend some really, really good quality time with Robert Kiyosaki. Many of you know Robert. He's the author of the Rich Dad Poor Dad series of books. Uh, he is a multi-multi-millionaire. His books have sold over 20 million, 26 million copies. And uh, I found in an interview that Robert gave not too long ago said that his his ongoing monthly income from all of his uh, rental properties and whatnot is about two million US. So this guy really, really knows what he's talking about. And in his book, The Second Chance, which you see, I'm taking my picture here with Robert. This was on the Summit at Sea Investor Cruise. Robert explains a lot of the reasons why people are going offshore today and why it makes good sense to do so. Now, interestingly, Robert himself is heavily invested in the United States with large apartment buildings and so forth. But he also recommends looking at investing offshore. And when he was it, on Ambergris Key, and we had the privilege of uh, taking him around and showing him some different developments, he said that he grew up in the islands, he actually grew up in Hawaii, and uh, he said he never knew a place as this, Ambergris Key, still existed. And he was uh, highly impressed by what he saw uh, going on there, and he uh, highly uh, is in favor of Belize. Now, here's the thing. Uh, this webinar was going to be strictly about Robert Kiyosaki and his book, and we were going to show some things that you could do to invest in cash flow in Belize to sort of follow the same basic model that Robert Kiyosaki does. However, some of those things we are going to show you today fall under the SEC rules, Reg D and Rule 506C. One of the things I wanted to talk to you in depth about today was the MB Belize Fund, who the uh, CEO and fund manager is John Turley. He's the CEO uh, and owner of Remax Caribbean Central America. However, and this is going to be a disappointment to some of you, however, I am not able to present uh, information on this fund today because of SEC uh, rules and regulations. However, I am going to be able to do that either Friday or Monday. So here's what I'm going to do. If you can't attend uh, another live webinar Friday or Monday, don't worry. I, I will present it anyway. I'll upload it and every single person that registered to be on today will get all of this information. So what, I, what I'm going to do today instead is there are some very, very important announcements that were recently made. And since I can't, by law, present some of those uh, syndication funds, or otherwise I get in trouble with the SEC and they can shut us down on, on several accounts, what I can do is tell you that on the Amargus Key, island of Amargus Key, there are several things that are market drivers that are not well known to the public yet. Some of these things were just recently announced, and this is going to go hand in hand with the information I was going to present uh, regarding a Robert Kiyosaki. So there's a couple things that I'm going to announce today that should be of interest to all of you, uh, whether or not you own property already or you're looking to buy investment property in the near future, and that is this. The Prime Minister, Dean Barrow, just announced plans uh, for the government to stick a ton of money and infrastructure into different parts of the country to boost tourism. Now, I'm going to go through some of these things in detail because you need to know how these, uh, these infrastructure improvements are going to affect your property values and the property values that, you, uh, that, are, that are in the general area. One of the major announcements that he said he was going to do, and this is backed up by a several different official reports, is he's going to build an international airport on the island of Ambergris Key. Now that is huge, and I'm going to go into detail about that in a little bit. The reason for this is simple. Tourism in Belize is the greatest revenue earner for Belize. So you look at the entire country, it's a very small country, about the size of Massachusetts, 330,000 people total in the country of Belize, 
uh, you can imagine it, it's the least densely populated country in all of the uh, Western Hemisphere, and most of it is, is, is designated for public parks, marine reserves, it's set aside for, for national lands. Only a, about 55% of the country itself is able to be developed, and the parts that are being developed are being developed responsibly, and that is providing Belize with a very, very nice revenue source, among other things, and they have decided as a government to invest in th those areas that are producing very well. So what this means for you as an investor, we'll just cut right to the chase, is that you need to look at where the government is investing money because these areas of the country are already proven revenue earners, which means people are going there already. They're not opening up brand new parts of the country that don't already have a base. They're looking at areas that already have good tourism, a good amount of cash flow coming in, good occupancy, and they're improving and expanding on these. So location is very, very important. And what also we're going to learn today is how some of this infrastructure is going to open up new areas that is already very, very close to development and we're going to take a look at what we call the path of progress. So let's just first of all talk about one of the biggest announcements that the Prime Minister made. He said that tourism, of course, remains our single largest revenue producer. And there, there are three projects that he was going to uh, announce and highlight. And the first one that is of most importance to residents of Ambergris Key is the North Ambergris Key Road Project. They said that they have just signed a contract for another four miles of paved road uh, to bring access, to notice on this slide, to the premier resorts on North Ambergris Key. And this is key. You know, many of you might not be familiar with the island, but uh, picture this. The island is 25 miles long. It's it goes anywhere from two or three blocks wide to three to four miles wide. So it's shaped long and skinny like a pencil. Right now, most of the development is in and around San Pedro town, which is on the south part of the island. However, that town is very cramped. It's congested. The reason for that is it was laid out many, many uh, years ago, back before there were even bicycles on the island, certainly no cars, so people would walk sandy streets, and so because of that, the streets are, are narrow, the houses are cramped together, and San Pedro town right now is the only town on the island, and from there, uh, development started to spread out, so it started to go south, but you can only go so far south before you run out of island. You can go about four and a half, five miles. That part of the island has been already developed, so there's not much room left for growth there. The north side, going north, so that remaining 20 miles of, of island, that is where we're seeing the major development, the major construction projects take place, all the new subdivisions, and that is where the premier North Ambergris Key Resorts are being built. So is this road really going to be that big of a deal? Well, take a look at this picture. This picture was taken two weeks ago. This is the northern road. So imagine going from San Pedro town north, you have 11 miles of this road because the, the final 9 or 10 miles of the island aren't paved at all. They're, they're not paved. There's no road. There's no road, period. So imagine going on your golf cart, because we don't use cards here. Uh, this golf cart obviously got stuck in the mud. This is a picture of what the northern road looks like in its current state. So imagine to your left, what you can't see on the other side of those utility poles are some amazing world-class five-star resorts like Grand Caribe, Cocoa Beach, Las Terrazas. I'll show you pictures of those in a minute. All of those resorts are sitting there on some of the most beautiful waters in the world, and the only way to those resorts is either by water taxi, which is limited because those boats can only hold so many people. They go on a set schedule, so if you want to go back and forth to town or to other resorts, sometimes you end up waiting a good hour, hour and 15 minutes, or or you can take this road. Obviously, <laughs> you don't take this road unless you absolutely have to. Now, to be honest, this road doesn't always look like this. This is after a good rain, uh, and they'll come through once it dries up, and they'll grade it. However, this is what people are dealing with as they try to access the northern island resorts and all of the property owners on that side. So what's happening is they're, they're right now up there 
uh, putting fill on this road. They have the heavy equipment up there, and they are actually improving it. Here's another shot of that same area. So on your right, you see the uh, the white buildings there. That is Las Terrazas Resort. I think it has about uh, 74 units there, uh, constructed condos. So let me just, for emphasis, go back to this other slide. Up until a few, few weeks ago, this was how you access Las Terrazas. This road, or by water taxi, this is what the road looks like now, and this is the final product right here. So you have a paved road. So imagine the property values of everything on the north side just took a major, major bump because accessibility is now easier, better than ever before. You can be up there with a golf cart, an ATV. The taxis actually uh, drive on this road. It's something that they've never been able to do before. Uh, taxis have never accessed properties on the north side because it was just impossible for them to travel there. Now with the paved road, they can. So again, before paving, after paving. And here are some uh, benefits to property owners. Some of you own property on the north side. For those of you who don't, take a look closely at this slide. This is an actual plot map from the Lands Department in Belmopan, our capital. These properties that you see in this photo, all of those little green squares are individually titled lots. Now what you're looking at is a conglomeration of about five different subdivisions. You have Ambergris Bay, Grand Belizean Estates, Palmyra Woods, Ambergris Woods, uh, Grand Mayan Estates. There are about 2,000 to 2,500 lots up in this area that are owned, uh, individually titled. Owners have uh, purchased these properties. Some owners have never seen these properties before that they own because they were never able to access them or access them easily. So up until just uh, about you know four or five months ago, you could not reach these properties without driving down that horrible road that I just showed you. Now, for the first time ever, these property owners can drive from San Pedro town up the east side of the island and then over on Good Road, the east-west connection road that connects these subdivisions to the road is actually in very, very good shape. So now the, the government promising to put infrastructure into the island just gave all these current property owners a big reason to rejoice. And this is one of the parts of the island that we're seeing a big boom in right now. Remember how I was telling you that San Pedro town is actually very cramped, congested, it's overbuilt, there's, there's just there's no more room for growth there. And the reason is the town is about four blocks long by three blocks wide. This here, this area is set to become the new town, a new town on the island of Ambergris Key, Belize. So very good news for all you property owners. Now this next slide is going to show you a nice uh, aerial view. So you see San Pedro town there and the lower uh, middle part of your screen is in the yellow oval and that blue line that goes to your upper right, that is the, uh, the road that they're paving. Uh, so that is either paved or completely paved all the way up until it hits, hits the east-west connection road. And that road then goes all the way over to Secret Beach, which is on the west side of the island that faces Leonardo DiCaprio's island of Blackador Key, which uh, for those of you who attended my uh, webinar that I, that I presented back in May, know what a huge effect that alone is happening as having on property values uh, in this part of Belize. So now, what the, the Prime Minister announced was the continuation of the road up another 11 to 12 miles. So that's what's exciting. Now, just to give you an idea of, of kind of the impact this is going to have on our tourism, these are some of those premier resorts that Prime Minister Dean Barr was talking about. Cocoa Beach in your upper, le upper left, one of the nicest resorts in the island. Next to it is Venetia, which is currently being built. We have uh, lower left-hand side, you can see a picture of Grand Carib. Upper right-hand side, Las Terrazas. Lower right-hand side, you can see Mata Chica, one of my favorite, most romantic resorts in the country. And you can see the waters out there. So now, for the first time, people will be able to access these resorts, not just by a water taxi, but also by road. So big, big improvement. So what this means for, for my clients and my investors is this. Progress is happening in this area and it's going to cause a bump and a higher demand for properties in this area because of something that's called familiarity. Now, I, I just... I didn't just find out about this, but it, it came to me as I was started to work in Belize real estate that my clients tended to want to purchase property 
where they spent their first vacation in Belize. So if I put them in a resort uh, in the south part of the island, like at Pelican Reef or uh, one of the other resorts down south, Victoria House, they fell in love with that part of the island. They ate at the restaurants in that part. They, they took tours from those parts of the island. Um, they fell in love because that is where they were familiar with. Then I noticed that if I put a person in San Pedro Town, well, they, they like San Pedro Town, so they wanted to buy something, maybe a condo on the beach or a studio or something. But then I noticed that if my client stayed up north, they like that nice, peaceful, uh, uh, out of the way feel of, of being up north at the northern resorts and what happened was they would rent a golf cart for a day or two start to drive around run into some for sale signs and then he eventually email and say you know what I like this area now it didn't matter if I took them from from there uh, to San Pedro town or down south nothing could compare with where they first fell in love with the island and so what this means is, is, is that the infrastructure is going in on the north-hand side, so more and more people are going to be able to access it easily. More people will stay up there because those bad reviews that some of the resorts get, such as, you know, the road's terrible and I, I find it hard to get around and my golf cart got stuck, you won't be reading those reviews anymore. So those resorts on the north side are going to get higher occupancy rates because now they're more attractive. It won't be just a water taxi ride as far as uh, getting to and from the resort and to restaurants, cafes, things like that. Now you can use a golf cart, get around, and this is going to, to provide us with a nice bump in property values and demand anything along that northern road. So for all of you looking to get in the game, uh, as far as an investment property goes, look for areas that are progressing like this and look for areas that have high familiarity. Now, the, the next thing that is almost an even, it's not really a bigger announcement, but these two go hand in hand, is this. Dean Barrow said that this road is going to be paved all the way up to the current Basel Jones airstrip, and that airstrip is going to be redesigned and expanded into an international airport. Now, the, what is the Basel Jones airstrip? This is actually the first airstrip ever on the island. It was installed to service a large uh, shrimp producing farm up there. And so this is where they could uh, take the shrimp and the shrimp larva uh, back and forth. And uh, this is just a, a grassy airstrip up about 12, 12 and a half miles north of town. This is as it sits today. Now it's no longer in use. There's no reason for it to be in use right now because the shrimp farm shut down years ago, but you can see that the airstrip is still there. So what they plan on doing, oh, let me just show you one more slide here. This is an aerial view. You see that there's a road there going uh, what looks like north. So the airstrip is, is roughly laid out to the north and or to the, you're looking, you're looking west. So you're looking from east to west. If you're standing on the ocean, you have this road going from the ocean all the way over to the airstrip. So this is the airstrip that he announced plans to build an international airport on. Here is a Google Earth photo uh, with a, with a, uh, a point, a pinpoint showing exactly where that will be. So you have San Pedro Town. Look at San Pedro Town, lower part of the screen. I know it's kind of blurry and I apologize for that. I should have outline that in an oval. You have San Pedro Town, which you can see is built up, and then you have this long stretch of island, and you see up there where the pinprick is, that is where the international airport is going to be built. And you can see that there, the island is completely undeveloped up there. It is, except for a, a few very small select resorts on the east side, you have thousands of acres of undeveloped property. Now, some of those acres are set aside as part of the United Nations World Heritage Site. So there's there's government land up there that is very protected. Both the land and the sea around it is, is very limited in what can be done, if anything. So this international airport is going to border that area so it won't infringe on it, but it will allow development of the other acreage around it and some ex very exciting things are going to happen there. So some of you might be asking the question, why? Why is this announcement such a big thing? I just don't get what the hype is about. I can fly to Belize uh, anyway today. It's true, you can. But, but check out these reasons why. Right now, you can easily get to Belize from any of these, these uh, major U U.S. cities and from Panama and El Salvador. You can fly direct from Miami, Atlanta, Charlotte, Newark, sh Chicago, Dallas, Houston, Los Angeles. We're also looking at adding flights from Canada. So for all you Canadians up there, you're going to be able to fly direct from major cities. Uh, we're looking at uh, Toronto, Calgary, 
Um, not sure about Vancouver Island yet, but uh, some of these major Canadian cities are going to be able to get to Belize easier. Right now, all of these major airlines, Delta, American, United, they all fly direct to Belize. However, you land on the mainland, which, which is where the only international airport in the country is, and that is located in the town of Ladyville. So let me show you a slide showing that. You see Ladyville there at the lower uh, left-hand side of your screen. That is where all the international flights come in. Now, once you land there, 65 to 75 percent of every person who gets on an international flight coming to Belize ends up transferring at some point to the island of Ambergris Key, Belize. They go to San Pedro. Now, some of them, some brave souls go by water taxi. Most go by Tropic Air or Maya Island Air, which are 14 passenger caravans. They actually are very, very convenient at getting people to the island. They have a, a whole fleet of planes. So if an international flight comes in, excuse me, if an international flight comes in full from, say, Houston, Dallas, or, Ram, or Miami, uh, Tropic Air, Maya Island Air will have a, a whole host of planes to put 14 passengers at a time on and fly them over to San Pedro. Now, this is the way people get to San Pedro. And you see, it, it's interesting because Ambergris Key is the major tourism center of the country of Belize. And the Prime Minister confirmed that. It's their major source of revenue. And yet, everybody that comes into the country has to make this stopover on the mainland before going to the island. And so, what this will enable people to do is instead of flying to the mainland, waiting for the Tropic Air flight, going over to San Pedro, then transferring to the resorts, they will be able to fly direct to Ambergris Key and bypass the mainland. Now you're saying, well, the, well how will that affect the mainland? Well, won't that hurt business there? No, not really. Because right now, the major tourism spots on the mainland are the Cayo District, so the San Ignacio area by the Guatemalan border, and the Placencia area, which is, a, again, a good 20 to 25 minute tropic air flight south. So this will enable people either to fly to the mainland of Belize if they're going to go there first or to fly right to the island of Ambergris Key, Belize. Now this has many, many benefits and I'll go through those in a minute. But first of all, just kind of go back to, to what Prime Minister Dean Barrow said, the island of Ambergris Key, Belize and the tourism that it offers are the largest revenue earner for Belize. And, and here's what he said, we expect this international airport uh, to provide a phenomenal boost in tourism, a phenomenal increase, an explosion. And these are the words he used for our already our market leader. So think about this. These international airports are not cheap. You can imagine the millions and millions of dollars it's going to cost the Belize government to put in this airport. And they expect a full return on their investment a veritable tourism explosion on the island of Ambergris Key. This is a good aerial photo showing you exactly where that's going to be. So again, you have San Pedro Town. Going south of San Pedro Town uh, is pretty much uh, all developed. There's really, it looks like there's some green space to be developed on there. In actuality, there's not much land left. Most of it is designated uh, uh, government protected land and lagoon. Uh, there are a couple of nice projects on there that we can tell you about in the Robert Kiyosaki webinar uh, regarding some of the syndications that you can get into if you're an accredited investor. However, look at the top portion of your screen. The location of the new international airport is where that red red uh, star is. So that will enable them, the north side, to be properly cared for and take off. So one of the quotes I like from Wayne Gretzky is, is something that made him so good. He says, a good hockey player plays where the puck is, a great hockey player plays to where the puck is going to be. So he had this intuitive sense. He didn't go to where the puck was because it wasn't going to be there for long. It was going to move. So we've adapted this in Belize to our investors. And we always tell our investors that if they're looking for the highest and best return, to look where the development will be. So a good investor will buy where the development is. He'll come into a market that is already 100% uh, completely developed. Every tree has been planted, every road graded, uh, every power line installed, and he'll say to himself, you know what, I feel safe, I feel comfortable, this is a good place to invest, people are coming here, that's great. But a great investor will look for areas like that, 
and they'll look just beyond those areas into the areas that are will that are are being developed that are having a, a reason to grow. They'll look for something in the path of progress. So what this means for, for all of my investors, I would encourage you to look at properties, whether it be land, condos, homes, whatever it may be, whatever your comfort level is, in and around uh, the international airport area, and also in and around any of the subdivisions that that new east or new northern paved road makes available. Those are the two biggest uh, drivers right now on Amargus Key. <coughs> Excuse me here. So some of the more benefits, just let me go through these quickly with you, of this international airport and the road, because they go hand in hand, is right now there is a limit to how many people Tropic Air and my island air can reasonably get to the island each and every day. Again, tourism has been booming on the island. I go into that in detail in another webinar. And I'll, in fact, I'll share some of those numbers with you in a couple weeks when I air something live, special event that I'll let everybody know about. But right now, Ambergris Key is experiencing a boom in tourism and has for the past three to four years. And because of the baby boomers and other things going on in the United States and Canada, that's not going to slow down anytime soon. So we need a way to bypass Tropic Air, bypass My Island Air. That's what this international airport is going to do for us. Another major thing is that for those of you who have been to San Pedro, one of the biggest complaints we get, and I don't, I don't think people realize that there is no way to fix this, is the traffic. You know, I, I constantly read on websites that all oh, the, you know, the traffic is horrible and just getting busier and each time I come, San Pedro's busier. Well, yeah, because tourism is growing and right now, uh, San Pedro town is the bottleneck. Everybody that comes to the island has to come in through Tropic or Maya Air. They land in right downtown San Pedro, get off their little planes, and now guess what? They have to get golf carts. They have to take taxis. They have to get around. And many times these people are, are going north to those northern resorts, but San Pedro becomes the bottleneck. So people are complaining about the traffic. There's nowhere to park. There's nothing, you know. Well, of course not. San Pedro Town was never meant to have a single car in it, and now it has thousands. Well, you just can't help that. So what this is going to enable us to do with that northern paved road with the International Airport is to properly develop larger towns in the island where cars you, you can have properties built with plenty of spaces for cars, for golf cart parking, for other things to develop. So San Pedro Town becomes less and less congested, and it becomes the older, quaint part of town as the other areas are booming in value and booming in uh, increased activity. And finally, what this does for us is makes it of more affordable, especially for families to get to the island. Right now, if you have a family of four, let's say mom and dad and two kids, or grandma and grandpa come down, they buy a condo, and now they want their kids and grandkids to visit. Okay, so imagine that scenario. Grandma and grandpa own a beautiful condo at uh, Grand Caribbean, Cocoa Beach, and they say, you know what, hey, come on down. And if the kids and the grandkids come down, that's five to seven people, they not only have to pay for their international flight into the international airport on the mainland, then they have to pay for a round-trip tropic air flight to the island. And right now, I believe those round-trip tropic air flights are, oh my goodness, I, I know with my discount, I was paying, I think, 100 120 They might be the open public, 150 bucks per person. So imagine it tacks on another $1,000 to a family's vacation. If they can bypass that and fly directly to the island, imagine how many more people will come, visit their friends and family, get exposed to the island, and then look at purchasing themselves. So that's why I think those two big announcements are, are some of the things that our investors should be focusing in on. So I'm going to take questions now. Let me see what time it is. I want to be respectful of everybody's time. I know it went on about 30 minutes. So if you want to ask me a question, go ahead and just type it in there in the questions area. And it can be about anything. Um, if you want to ask me the ones about uh, the airport, the road, other things first, that's fine. If you want to just go right to other questions you have or are thinking about, I can answer those too. All right, we have a, a question from Marcy. Uh, when is the airport due to be completed? We don't have any dates on that yet, Marcy. I do know that they have been in the, in the planning stages uh, to get the uh, direction of the airstrip right, to have uh, uh, enough of a length of runway to decide which types of fl flights they're going to allow into the country. What they're looking at is everything from uh, noise levels, flight patterns, uh, what is already existing in the area that they might not want to disrupt and things like that. Uh, so I know that planning
something is in the works, and as soon as we have uh, an announcement on that as far as a break ground date uh, that we're going to roll that out and announce that to all of our um, all of our clients and investors all right I have another question by Joseph okay the paving of the road will the paving just be the road north or have there been any mention okay I'll just read the question are they just paving the road north or has there been any mention of the east-west connection road being paved as well all right that's a great property so or question so here's the deal. Let's kind of just uh, bear with me. I'm going to go up to another slide here just so I can answer this question with a, with a pretty picture. Um, okay, this is a good one to use. Okay, so the road north, that east-west connection road going north, that was never a proper road. And what I mean by that is if you go back to this slide, you see those telephone poles running alongside this road? This, this actual road was just a utility easement so up until about a year year and a half ago the San Pedro Town Council was never responsible for actually building a proper road or maintaining this small stretch because it was simply a utility easement it was not made for public transportation once the San Pedro Town Council took ownership of it then it started to improve gradually so they took what was here that this basic dirt trail that was formed simply by golf carts going up and down it you know uh, several times a day and they started to fill it to grade it but this road was never built as a proper road so it needed to be it needed to be done so. So that's why you have people uh, that some Peter Town Council bringing in the fill like you see here, uh, bringing in the crushed limestone, grading it properly, and then finally paving it. Now, other roads on the north side of the island, for example, this east-west connection road that Joe was talking about, that road was built to mainland Belize standards as a proper road already. So. Not only was it elevated, it had several layers of crushed limestone, it's been compacted properly. That road was built to handle large 18-wheeler trucks and, uh, and uh, semis. That road most likely will not be paved any time in the future because simply it doesn't need to be. Uh, most roads in the island are not paved and they don't need to be. Uh, it's just that this, this northern road providing access that will receive um, a very very heavy traffic and that was never a real road to begin with that's the focus of the government because that's the road that needs to be improved the east-west connection road is fine the way it is and that road goes all the way from the east side all the way over to the uh, west side beaches at secret beach all right let me see another question here is there a plan for a larger airport being planned for Toledo? And this is coming from Josh Parker. All right, Josh, there, there is an international airport looking at being built in the Placencia area. Um, Toledo's farther south. Toledo's in the, the uh, Punta Gorda area. That's down where a lot of the Mayan villages are. Uh, there will not be an international airport there because there's simply not enough uh, tourism there's not enough traffic going down to that part of the country they are looking at opening up Placencia a little bit so there is an international airport that is set to open down there uh, we don't know when that'll be but that'll certainly provide a, a nice boost to the uh, Placencia area and that will enable people also to bypass the Ladyville airport and go straight into Placencia Placencia does not get nearly the draw that Ambergris Key does for those of you who are not quite sure what we're talking about here Placencia is a very small coastal town on the mainland of Belize it's on the south uh, some people like Placencia uh, there's good whales shark diving down there and they, they like the feel however it is not Ambergris Key Ambergris Key is an island off the coast of Belize is the reef is simply uh, a couple hundred yards offshore it's where all the snorkeling diving fishing take place it gets the majority of the tourism so there there will be uh, I believe and don't quote me on this, but I believe there will be an opening of the airport in Placencia. When? We don't know because that's not a government-sponsored project. And that's important for everybody hearing this to know. The project in Placencia is being sponsored by private investor money by a group of individuals who are building and selling off lots and developments there. So the opening of the airport will depend on them continuing to raise the millions of dollars from private funds. It is not backed by the Belizean government. It is not their focus. And this is telling. That airport down there, the air runway I should say, 
I would guess, I'm not an expert, but I would guess by looking at it that it is 50% completed as far as what's there. The government has chosen not to fund that airstrip because there's not enough revenue in the area. They decided to build a new one from scratch on the island of Ambergris Key, Belize. Great, hope that answers your question. Let's uh, take a couple more. It says, uh, here's one from Steve Roberts. Trying to stay ahead of the puck, which areas of property which areas or properties do you see as properties for the future? The the ones that I see uh, that are the best investments right now are anything around the Secret Beach area, anything along the East-West Connection Road, and it depends on what you're buying for. Um, I like the subdivisions of Grand Mayan. There's some lots left there that I like. Uh, I also like a few select lots in Secret Beach. It depends on where they're located. And also anything around the new International Airport area. So right now, uh, John and I are looking around the area, seeing what's available. And again, for those of you who have invested with me before, I recommend investing in up-and-coming areas, but not in areas that are so far outside of the realm of the infrastructure that they become a dead area and that they have no um, – not, I'm not, not going to say no hope of, of seeing development in the near future, but a very small likelihood of development. So, for instance, in the uh, along the East-West Connection Road, there are some subdivisions located a mile or two from that road that uh, have some lots in there, and you can pick up the lots fairly cheap. However, I don't recommend those because access is uh, is a big issue. And whenever I buy property myself, I recommend it to clients, I want to make sure that the property is, a, is at least accessible by road today or will be within the foreseeable future because there's growth happening in the area. So to answer your question, Steve, anything along the East-West Connection Road, including Secret Beach, and also anything up around the International Airport. All right. Um Another question here, it says, what is the minimum you think someone needs to purchase a place that can be rented out and produce income? All right, here's a good question for those looking for rental income. And um, what I like to do, Joe, is just I'm just going to go through a quick spiel. This is a very, very short uh, spiel that I've been working on. This is going to be the subject of another webinar. But imagine this, and if all of you have a piece of paper, just please write these numbers down. And this is going to this is going to be quite eye opening to many of you. Uh, most people come to me and they say they want rental income, just like this question right now from from Joe. So Joe, you're looking for rental income. The what I would say the the least inexpensive condo that would be on the rental market as a vacation rental. In other words, it's it's close to where people want to be. Restaurants, cafes, the ocean, the seafront, you know, something that has a draw is going to be about $250,000. So right now at Royal Palm Villas, you can buy a two-bedroom, one-bath condo with beautiful views for $250,000, okay? After stamp tax, uh, some closing costs, and whatnot. You're going to be up around 275. So everybody, write down that figure: 275 thousand dollars. Now, let's say you, as the owner, plan to use that condo a month or two every winter. So you're going to use it yourself, and you say, you know what? I want to rent that out the other nine or ten months a year, and I want to see what my income is going to look like. So I did all these numbers. I don't have them in front of me. I'm just going to kind of kind of go from memory. The best way to rent out that condo. Uh, for the for the next 10 months that you're not going to be there as in a long-term rent rental and you're going to rent that for about 1200 US dollars a month now you get a little bit higher by renting by the night but we're going to just going to go with this number and I'll explain why so everybody write down twelve hundred dollars a month now out of that twelve hundred dollars that you receive from your renter you're going to pay your uh, all perils insurance which is going to be about uh, uh, 100 to 150 a month you're going to pay your HOA fees which is going to be 250 to 300 a month you're going to have some utilities in there some wear and tear other things like that and so at the end of the day once you've put down two hundred and seventy five thousand dollars for a condo you may make at the end of the day anywhere from two three four thousand dollars a year in return now so everybody do the math you've spent Two hundred seventy-five thousand dollars. All right, and you're going to make, you're going to make. Say, let's let's go all out. Let's say you you find just a sweet deal, and you're going to make five thousand dollars profit off of your off of your um, 
let's say your um, your investment. Okay, so five thousand out of two hundred seventy-five. So what? So what is that? That is about let's see, two percent. Yeah, I'd say two two and a half percent ROI. So you're looking at two and a half percent. Let's 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 go all out. Let's say three percent. Let's say you're going to make three percent off your investment for two hundred seventy-five. Now everybody write this number down. Let everybody write down the number one hundred thousand dollars. Okay. What if you could invest one hundred thousand dollars, not two seventy five, but one hundred thousand, and make ten percent on it? And here's the way you do that: you buy. You don't even have to buy lots. I can show you how to do this by buying notes. But you go to an area of the island that is up and coming, just like we talked about. Something by the airport, something in Grand Mayan, Secret Beach, whatever. It doesn't matter. And you 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 find lots that are listed for fifty thousand dollars a piece. All right. And you go to the seller and say, Look, I have forty thousand dollars I'll give you forty thousand cash for each lot and um, he goes back and forth and he says you know what okay forty five so forty five thousand dollars per lot is what you get them for so now you have ninety thousand dollars in your purchase price your stamp tax and your closing costs are another five each so for a hundred thousand dollars you now have two lots in a nice area all right you immediately once you get title put them back on the market all right Put them back in the market, and you're gonna you're gonna list them for sixty thousand dollars per lot. You say why sixty? Well, because you are going to offer owner carry financing, and the way that works in Belize is typically you are going to ask your buyer to put ten percent down at the purchase price. You're going to charge them ten percent interest because the banks charge between ten and a half to twelve percent. So you're going to undercut the banks, and you're going to charge them ten percent interest on their loan, and you're going to hold title to those properties and not give it up. You're not going to transfer title to them until they pay you off in full. So you spend a hundred thousand. You're selling the lots for sixty apiece. You say, "Oh, come on, Dennis, that it's not going to work." I mean, yes, it does. I do this all day long with my own properties. My clients do as well. But let's just say you sell them for what you bought them for. So now you bought them for fifty. You sold them for fifty, and you have a hundred thousand dollars in a loan that people are paying you monthly on that you're making 10% interest on. So 10% interest on a $100,000 uh, loan, you're making $10,000 just your first year alone. Now imagine what you can do with $10,000. You can come down to Belize, you can rent an, <coughs> excuse me, an incredible condo for a month. You can bounce around the country. <coughs> Hang on one second here. You can bounce around the country for, for, for four or five years. So rather than coming back to the same condo every year in, on, on the island, same condo, same restaurant, same cafes, same views, you take your $10,000 a year in profit that you're making, and you spend two weeks at, uh, at Cocoa Beach this year, and then maybe two weeks up at Mata Chica next year, maybe two weeks on the mainland the year after, whatever. But you're taking a $100,000 investment, making 10% rather – then, then buying a condo at 275, making two and a half percent. And here's the deal. And, and I think yeah, Joe, Joey asked the question. Let's say you needed to finance that condo, so you only had maybe half to put down. If you got a, a, a $275,000 condo that you put half down on, and now you're paying, let's say, eight, ten percent on the balance. If you can get a, a, a rate of eight percent, you'd be lucky. Probably ten percent of the balance. Now you're losing money. So that's not to say that we don't have income producing properties. Uh, right now, we have a development on the south part of the island, Mahogany Bay Village, that is open to accredited investors. And what that means is your net worth needs to be one million or more, not including the value of your home. And you need to make over 250,000 a year as a single person or 300,000 a year as a married couple for the at least the past three years. So if you are an accredited investor, you can buy into a real estate syndication that will pay out anywhere between 12 and 16%. But that's a real estate syndication. That is not looking at buying a condo for rental income. So I know it's a long answer to a uh, to a question, but I uh, hope that hope that um, hope that answers your question. All right, um, take some more question here. I have a question. All right, so one, one of our attendees is asking for larger parcels of land that are undeveloped. And uh, rather than a single size lot, you know, going back to the slide, let me just use this as a, as a talking purposes. 
Um, there we go. So you notice this uh, this plot map. This is a, a plot map right from the lands department. Those tiny squares, those are individual lots. Those typically measure 60 feet wide by 80 feet deep, a lot less than acreage, right? So uh, lots tend to be broken up into very small pieces and islands uh, to, to allow more people to buy. Uh, and those larger squares that you see there, some of those larger squares are developable parcels. So developers or investors may be able to buy those up, subdivide them into smaller parcels. So to answer your question, to get a five acre chunk of property in the island, you're looking at significant outlay of cash uh, compared to the mainland. On the mainland, you might be able to go and you know, maybe for 100,000, be able to find a nice five acre chunk of land somewhere, but it is gonna be isolated. On the island, you're looking at probably several hundred thousand dollars uh, I know of a, a parcel right now close to the east side beaches. It is a two and a half acre parcel that would probably go for about 300,000 um, 300, US. And again, the reason for that is a person that owns two and a half acres could be uh, could build quite a nice bed and breakfast or a small condo development. So 300,000 for the land and something close to the beach for two and a half acres, that, you know, it's pretty good. But uh, you won't find any any really screaming deals because those larger parcels are just worth worth too much money. All right, uh, here's a question from Arela. She says, will Hopkins have an airport for small local flights? Yes, it will. In fact, right now, I believe Tropic Air flies to the Hopkins area. Again, Hopkins is an area close to um, Placencia and Dangriga. Uh, this is an area on the mainland in the south part of the country. Uh, there is a major development being sold down there, but I have serious reservations about it. If anybody wants to know, uh, P, uh, PM me and I'll go through my reasons why and why I, I feel my clients should stay clear of there. However, for those of you looking to vacation in Hopkins, it is a beautiful area. I believe uh, Hamanasi Resort is in Hopkins. Uh, some other very nice, uh, relaxed, out of the way resorts. So yes, I believe you can take Tropic Air or Maya Island Air there currently. All right, here's a um, a question from: Are commercial lots available on the East West Connection Road? Uh, yes, there are. Um, there are several lots that are designated commercial, which would be good for cafes, restaurants, stores, things like that. So as this road gets busier, you're going to see more and more. Um, uh, businesses pop up right now already in the secret beach area you're seeing some food trucks get established uh, to support the uh, the people that are going there to swim in the beach there's also a bed and breakfast being built in secret beach uh, by some good clients of mine uh, Steve and Bobby Osler they're gonna be opening that up soon so we'll let everybody know when that happens but uh, yes uh, you can get residential and commercial lots in many of the subdivisions on the island um, <clears throat> Okay, here's a, um, uh, a question by Fawn. If I am going to Belize mid-January and I own a lot on the north side, how will I be able to make my way to it? Okay, it all depends on where it is, Fawn. I'm, I'm not sure where you own. If you own a lot uh, in a subdivision that already has road access, for instance, Grand Belizean Estates, Palmyra Woods, Grand Mayan, you can drive from San Pedro Town all the way to those lots. If you own a lot in one of the other subdivisions, such as Ambergris Bay, uh, many of those lots do not have road access yet, so you might have to drive close to it and then walk in. Um, so you ba basically PM me after this, let me know which subdivision you own in, and I'll tell you how to get there. You might even be have, even have an agent um, go up with you and, uh, and, and uh, take you right to it. All right. All right. Okay. Yes, Jack says, will the northern road be paved more than what you saw? Uh, yes, okay, so Jack was recently on the island. He said he went up the northern road. He's asking the question, is it going to be paved further? Yes, another at least uh, five, six, seven miles further, all the way up to the uh, area where the international airport will be built. All right. Um, all right. Here's a question. If I own a property three lots in from the beach on the north side, when or how will I be able to get to it? That depends if the uh, subdivision already has road access or not. A lot of, a lot of times, just, just so you know, 
for those of you who aren't familiar with this uh, part of the island, in this subdivisions in general in Belize, but not all subdivisions have roads already installed. So not all lots are accessible by road. Sometimes they grow organically. Somebody who owns a lot, three or four lots away from a road, will pay their developer, their builder to go ahead and and, uh, and bust it in for them. Uh, it's very easy. It's not that expensive to do. Other times, the developer will actually install all the roads first. So, really depends on on what uh, uh, where you own. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, tell you what, I, I have other questions coming in. I appreciate them all. Uh, we'll take one more from Terry, and then I'll ask if you can just email me your questions. We're, we're going in, in an hour. So what are the general building codes, height, materials? Are they difficult to manage? That's a great question. So if you own a vacant piece of property and you're looking at building, uh, all you need to do is follow the basic building codes provided by the San Pedro Town Council. There's a height restriction on most of the island of three stories or 34 feet. So if you stay under that, you're legal. So I believe it's uh, three stories. Or if you want to build up your house, perhaps put it on stilts. You can put up a, a stilt house, then go up three stories. But you have to stay under 34 feet. You also have to stay within the, the boundary lines of the property five feet on the sides and 10 feet on the front and back. So your footprint has to fall within that. Otherwise, you can build on the Belizean hardwoods. You can build on a concrete, variety of building materials, and you just have to meet uh, standard building codes, which would apply to your electric, your plumbing. In fact, what I'll do, Terry, is I have a PDF on some of the building codes. I will send that to you after this webinar if you will shoot me your email address and, um, and uh, a reminder. I will get that out to you. All right, so once again, a um, couple of things just before we wrap up. For those of you who are hoping to hear the uh, Robert Kiyosaki webinar, I, uh, I greatly apologize again because of SEC rules and regulations. There was a couple more things we needed to do to the information in order to make it legal. I am going to be uh, putting that together, and hopefully this Friday or next Monday, going to be hosting that webinar live, going through his book, Second Chance, information on, uh, on taxes, how to legally, legally, again, uh, avoid those by looking at uh, some information from the book Tax-Free Wealth by Tom Wheelwright, also some information from Tom Hopkins, John Turley, other experts in the real estate and investing fields. So I, I certainly appreciate uh, all of you uh, attending today. Um, like I said, I, I promise not to sell anything. I'm sticking by that word. I am not going to pitch anything. I'm just going to let you know that the areas of progress that we talked about today, if you'd like more information on any of those areas, feel free to, uh, to ask me. But again, I hope this uh, was very educational for all of you and uh, hope to hear from you soon. All right, thanks a lot. Have a great day and talk to you soon. Cheers.